In this video, I have BenQ Designer Display. This is their PD3220U. It is a 32-inch 4K IPS panel UHD resolution display. What makes this display great is that it has been pre-calibrated from the factory with all the different color modes that we have come to expect. Adobe RGB, sRGB, DCI-P3, Display P3, Rec. 709. But this display also introduced a few new color modes too. For example, darkroom color mode, CAD cam, an animation color mode designed for animators. In fact, it also has a new mode that I like a lot when I'm working with my MacBook Pro and that's called the M-Book color mode, where BenQ have actually gone in and tweaked the colors to match specifically with the way how Apple has been calibrating their devices with built-in display, specifically a laptop or the iMac for instance. One of the things though that have actually caught my attention when going over the manual for this display is that BenQ made spe a specific mention that on two separate color modes, sRGB and Display P3, that the display has been calibrated from the factory with greater uniformity. So what I'd like to do in this video is test out all the different color modes to see if that is true, number one, and then secondly, that is going to give us a really good indicator of which color mode we should be really calibrating this display on or doing a software calibration for this matter so that we get the best of both worlds, a software calibrated display and also the greatest uniformity. I'm Art Suwan Sang, BenQ Ambassador, and let's do the uniformity test. Before we start, please subscribe and hit on the notification bell so you'll be updated when I release the second part to this video. So display uniformity. I've actually spent about three hours testing the uniformity of this display in various different color modes that BenQ have shipped with, specifically with the focus on sRGB and display P3. So let's go ahead and take a look at the results. So, so far, based on what we can see here is that this is the sRGB result. And if we look at the sRGB result across the board, and when we start to look at the luminance value, we can see that across from the whites to the gray to the dark areas, the display uniformity have passed perfectly. But let's actually go ahead and take a look at some other measurements details here in this case. Rather than just looking at the luminance, let's take a look at the delta E value, which I think is a more accurate value and a more accurate assessment on the uniformity level anyway because it does the calculation based on the different values that it measures rather than just a percentage variation. So in this case on a Delta E2000 on white, gray, and dark it passes perfectly just fine as well and also on the Delta EAB it also passes on the white, the gray, and the dark gray areas. So sRGB color mode is proving to be really great in this case. So the color mode that we're looking at right now, this is DCI-P3. And with DCI-P3, if we look at based on the percentage value or the variation between all the different nine grids that we have there, it didn't really pass. In this case, we set a threshold of 5%. Some of the value has gone as up as high as 14%, for instance. So there is quite a bit of a variation there. And it also shows up even more in the gray and also somewhat in the dark gray areas too. But let's go ahead and further check out the delta E value. If we start to look at the delta E value here, we start to notice that, for instance, the left side of my panel here is actually the one where it's the most ununiform, where it's actually the culprit on the white, the gray, and also the dark gray. Let's take a look at the delta E AB value. Again, very similar result to what we have seen before in terms of uniformity and also again. So we start to notice that the left side of the screen is less uniform than the center or the right side of the screen when we divide our screen into a nine grid like so. And now we're looking at a Rec. 709 color space. So in Rec. 709 color space, if we look at the percent luminance here, in the whites, the grays, and the dark grays, the result is very similar to what we've seen in DCI-P3. The uniformity is really great in the middle. On the other ends, when we start to go onto the other quadrants, it starts to vary a little. 
if we start to take a look at the, the better value here, in this case, or the better measurement value, the delta E value, we start to see that very similar to DCI-P3 as well, is that the left side of the screen is less uniform than the center or the right side of the display. And this is repeated also in the delta 3 ab with the worst quadrant area being the middle left and also the bottom left of the display. So here's a uniformity test result for Adobe RGB color mode for this display. We can see that in different areas, the white, the grays, and also the dark in percent luminance, it's not really good. It's much better when we start to look at the delta E values, but we start to see that the display on the left side is actually where the uniformity issues are happening. And also in this case, when we look at the delta E AB, we also see very similar result to the delta E value and also the percentage value. So this is Mbook color mode. This is probably one of my favorite color mode to use on this display. And we can still see here that the uniformity across Mbook color mode is still not quite as good as I like it to be. Now in this case, if you're really using it in book color mode, you'll be okay for the most part. Now, if your work though requires that you work in a mode that has a greatest uniformity or you know greatest color accuracy for that matter, I would probably stick with the color modes of BenQ of actually calibrated display from the factory with the greatest uniformity. In this case, it will be sRGB and display P3. So I have two color modes left that I tested. This color mode is the user-defined color mode. This is where I can go in and pick the different white points of the display and I can also change the RGB or the red, green, and blue color output of the display also, which I've actually done in this case. And if we go and take a look at the uniformity test value here, again, doesn't look really good in this specific color mode. And saving the best for last, this is display P3 color mode. The result is very similar to sRGB, where the uniformity is actually fantastic across all parameters that I've tested on. In this case, if we look at the white, under the luminance percentage, it passes the gray, dark gray, and even if we change our measurement parameters to the delta E to find the delta E value, most of the time our delta E value, the greatest one hovers at around two or maybe a little bit above two and just the regular delta E 2000. And if we take a look at the delta E AB, most of the values are actually below two in this case, where 1.5 is generally about the highest for the delta E AB value across the white, grays, and dark grays. So based on a uniformity test result, sRGB and Display P3 are the two best color modes to set your PD3220U on if you want to edit anything on this display with the greatest uniformity across the entire panel. Now this also means that sRGB and Display P3 will probably be the two best color mode for you to do a software calibration on this display as well, but make sure that you stay tuned to the second part of my video for that. Lastly, if you want to be able to custom profile your display in different color mode and maintain the uniformity, one of the other BenQ displays that you want to look at is the SW321C. That is their 32-inch 4K, same resolution as this display, but the difference between the SW line is that it has a hardware calibration chip on the display. And with that one, BenQ have also introduced a technology called Uniformity Version 2, which means that throughout any color mode that you do a custom calibration on that display, it will maintain a uniformity across all those different color modes. So if you want color uniformity across the entire display on different color mode, the SV321C is probably the one to look at. Now this display so far is no slouch. It is a great display. I've actually loved using it a lot. It has a great design and it also has two modes with amazing uniformity as you saw from the test that I've actually done here. So anyway, I hope that you find this video helpful. Please like, subscribe to my channel, and hit on the notification bell so that you'll be updated when I release part two of this video about software calibration. And until next time, art is right.